Ready? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James Presbyterian Church. Here we are again, and still, um, on the corner of 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue in the village of Harlem in the city of New York. Since 1927, we've been in this spot, but we've been in ministry for 128 years, and we welcome you to our sanctuary today. I'm going to be a little low-key today. I'm not feeling so well, but we'll get through this worship service because God has called us here to worship. Thanks be to God. Let us open with our opening psalm. Our opening psalm from our lectionary is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7, which speaks to the importance of sharing the stories from generation to generation so that we don't lose the lessons learned in our history and that we also can share the victories that God has, where God has brought us through to this point in time. So the priest says, Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the word of my mouth. For I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old. Things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell to the coming generations. The glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He has established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn. Rise up and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. This is our opening Psalm number 78 verses one through seven. I now introduce you to our ruling elder Andrea Bradford, who is our liturgist online for the day. Ruling elder Andrea Bradford. Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is a beautiful day that the Lord has made, and we are here to worship. 
thank God for this opportunity, the privilege of being able to worship in communion together. Yes. And so let us now move on with our service, with our call to worship, which we will read responsively. With gratitude, we gather in anticipation that we will not leave here like we came. For here, we are invited to lay down the burdens that are on our shoulders. With joy, we can claim that your spirit of comfort is here mm -hmm. and still the same. Strengthened by your love, we are greeted with the hope of the ages anew. Worshiping with our hearts, minds, and souls, we seek to embrace your way and your will. A hallelujah is our praise. Hosanna is our assurance. And amen is our prayer that all we claim today will be made so by your grace. Our opening hymn this morning is, I sing the mighty power of God. Even though your slide says, I sing the might power of God. It is the mighty power of God. And it is three verses from Isaac Watts in the blue hymnal at number 288. I sing the mighty power of God. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad, and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at God's command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. God born the creatures with a word, and then pronounced them good. Lord, how thy wondrous art is played where I turn my eyes. If I survey the ground, I tread or gaze upon the skies. There's not a plant or flower below that makes thy glories known. And clouds arise and tempest blow by order from thy throne. While all that borrows light from thee is ever in thy care. And everywhere that we can be, thou God art present there. Amen. We do indeed sing the mighty power of God. God is powerful. God is God that we adore. God is. God guides us. And we continue this adoration with our prayer of adoration. Jesus, mm -hmm. when you walked upon the earth, you faced those who would flaunt their weakened faith over the people for mm -hmm. the sake of our salvation. We witness you speaking truth to power in ways that inspire us to walk in our faith with honor for your glory. Yes. Even as the scribes, priests, and Pharisees plotted to bring you down, you still healed, blessed, caught, and sat with sinners to make them whole. For the love of us, you did these things. May we hold fast to the lesson you give to always work for what's right and to keep on keeping on. And we will do for your sake. Amen. Man, we keep on keeping on because we've come this far by faith. So we can't turn around. Let us sing our second song. But now we're good. 
Knudsen, the Oscar leaders in the verse. We've come this far apart congregation together worshiping after 128 years right. we've come this far by faith because God has never failed us yet oh I'm sorry really on Andre wherever I get to you go right ahead no we we don't we don't have to apologize for the truth amen, right, amen. <laughs> we have come this far by faith and by God's love for us and we continue for another hundred and plus years right. in this same faith. Right. We hold on to that faith as we continue on this journey. We are a people, a, individuals that come together walking the path. We walk the path because we have faith and because we know God is with us. Yes. But sometimes we need to to just say we're sorry for, for the things that we do that we know are just not what God would want. Mm -hmm. And so we have this time to be able to say 
prayers together and to have this time of confession together. We have this call to our prayer. It says, recognizing that sin is a visitor in all our lives. It is fitting that we should confess together. Speaking aloud our sins is calling the demon by its name. Uh -huh. Giving Christ the authority to remove it from our hearts. And so we say this prayer of confession together. In, In this confession, I own up to my part of what makes this world a hard place to live. God, please know that our complicit complacency is often not intentional. We read the headlines, watch the news, and feel defeated wondering, well, what can I do anyway? And it is in that silence where we sit, not loving our suffering neighbor as ourselves. God, we know that if we but ask, you will teach us when to speak out and how to lift up our voice to state your will. We pray that we don't get drawn into the circle of debate that becomes a blame game. Like Jesus, we hope to shine a light on the hypocrisy and lies and call for the world to see all the needs of peace, food, water, shelter, and life itself as holy. We thank you that in our confession, we gain the wisdom to be healers of the nation. Think about those words, and I will get them on the screen so you can reread them, but think about them and really imagine how we may be able to be better in our hearts as they are drumming outside in the park for us to pray and to march on. Let us pray to, in our hearts and confess to God. Thank you, Lord. And I'm just 
you been so good? You've been, been so good. Words that should be on our lips all the time. Yes. Right. All the time. Oh. When we are when we are struggling, when we are happy, when we are sad, when we are hurt, when we are joyful, when we are appreciative, we can just say, Thank you, Lord, you've been so good. Yes. And God says, Yes. I forgive you when you step away, but I am still your God. I still love you, whatever you do. <laughs> we have God's assurance of this forgiveness, this pardon. Yes. Our God is faithful. Yes. God yes. simply says in the world's complexity, yes, I will forgive. The Holy Spirit says, I will show you new mercies. And Jesus calls us out as beloved <laughs> and gives us a very real grace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And another simple song where we just say, Jesus is real to me. <laughs> Gives me the victory with this assurance. You know, there are a lot of people out there in the world who doubt him. As for me, I can't live without him. So I'm here to tell you that's why I love him so. He's real in my life. He's so real to me. I rock back and forth like they do in those connects. Welcome to everyone here. Welcome to everyone on Facebook 
and we want to say welcome to you who will tune into this later on YouTube. And we also want to encourage you that we are here together to pray together and bring our hearts together. And online, that does not preclude you from being able to do so. You have a little chat button where you can write out your prayers and your thoughts and your amens. And you can do that on YouTube. And you can do that on Facebook Live as well today. But whatever it is, however you're joining us, we pray that the Holy Spirit visits upon your heart and leaves you with the blessing in our troubled world. We yes. find ourselves today because even in the midst of trouble, God is still there. And God yes. still wants us to be able to lift up our heads and move forward in the world so that we can see God's glory leading us ahead instead of the pain and the misery of this world. Mm. It is Sunday, November the 12th, 2023. And I would like to say welcome again and our, let you know that you can email us all the time at at uh, St. James 409 at Verizon.net. We all, many of us get that email on that email chain, so we'll be able to answer that. Our phone number, 212-283-4541. And if you want to do anything, you want to mail your offerings or send a note of encouragement of us or ask us a question about what it means to be Presbyterian <laughs> or about the history of St. James, you can do so at 409. That's 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue in New York, New York, 100. Three, one. And we're going to be updating this very soon. Our website at www.stjamesharlemnyc.org. But it is up to date. You scroll down that front page and see the <laughs> PayPal donate button. You can donate to all sorts of ministries and just to the general welfare of the church. We're going to be speaking more about giving and different projects and ways of doing stewardship. The session and I, we had a wonderful meeting yesterday and had some wonderfully uplifting ideas. Rather than working from crisis and thinking about living in crisis, we're going to think about a place where God is blessing us with discernment and wisdom. So that is our commitment to move forward. Thanks be to God. There's a saying in here in your bulletin that says, from my mom to you. You know that I put that in there from my mom when we used to share these, these little moments on the phone where she would share these sayings that she was reading in her daily journal uh, as she was um, as she started um, her journey with Alzheimer's. So I keep this as a memory. She's still alive, but I keep this as a memory of that moment. But this one is from Epicurus. And it says, do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Huh. Remember that what you have now was once among the things you only hoped for. Yes. Yes. Sweet. Remember that. Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you have now was once among the things you only hoped for. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask if Stephanie will share the screen and move to the next slide because I want to share with you. And you see this in your bulletin, so you can take it out. And you may actually want to be able to, if you have it in your bulletin and you know someone you want to mail this to, you can. It is our annual joint Thanksgiving Day service, which will be taking place right here at St. James Presbyterian Church. And the interim minister at Abyssinian Baptist Church, or one of their ministers on their staff, will be delivering the sermon. And it will be held on Thursday, November the 23rd at 11 a.m. And we are dedicated to getting you home to your turkey. <laughs> and all the mashed potatoes and your, and your beans, greens, tomatoes, ham, lamb, yeah. 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 <laughs> all the things that Shirley Caesar talks about in her song. But I wanted to let, give you just a little bit of background on this service. This is not just, let's come together for Thanksgiving and worship. This is a worship service that started in 1906. These four churches have been worshiping together for 117 years because in 1906, in August of 1906 in Brownsville, Texas, there was an African-American troop of Buffalo soldiers who were moved to Brownsville, Texas, and the people of Brownsville were not very happy. And they staged a riot in which one person was killed and they blamed it on the battalion of soldiers. And rather than come to the defense of these were Teddy Roosevelt's favorite soldiers, these uh, Buffalo soldiers to go out into the West and do what he wanted them to do, he dishonorably discharged them. All reports came back from all of the military that they were not involved with this. And he still dishonorably discharged them, which effectively cut off all of their pensions, cut off everything to them. And so we had this worship service. The day after, the day on Thanksgiving was the first Thanksgiving that Teddy Roosevelt declared Thanksgiving in 1906. 
So on that very day, in opposition to Teddy Roosevelt, we had this worship service. And the people marched down the aisle with their offerings and sent all of their offerings to the families who were dishonorably discharged. And if you look in the New York Times 1906 article, which I have, you will see that this minister railed against Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> and, he, and he told people that if you vote for him, that you might as well say that you want to go back 100 years because this is a desecration to all that these people have fought for in this country. So we come together to remember the power of what it means when we come together. And we can be thankful for the power of coming together and understand that even in our times, coming together in faith as faith communities enables us to have a voice, a theological voice in our community that can make change and that can bring us together and figure out where we need to be in solidarity with one another. Thanks be to God. Very nice. I also just want to do a quick thank you to our worship team here. <laughs> um, Oscar's doing some exceptional work today and I'm so glad he's supporting me as I'm not feeling well today. I'm so grateful for that. I thank the session of St. James for your leadership and the deacon board for your ministry. Thank you for sharing your gifts, leadership with dedication, spirit, enthusiasm, and love. Remember to visit our social media pages where we do things on the regular. We found, and it's on our Facebook page, we found from the Presbyterian Historical Society a photograph from November 1928 of the youth of this church lined up from the tallest to the smallest. Huh. And the third one, the third or fourth young man in there has his little Argyle socks because he's wearing knickers. <laughs> and then they're coming down the steps as well in this beautiful photograph, a representation of the first year, most likely the first year anniversary time of when we marched over from where we were, which is now Rendell Memorial Presbyterian Church. We marched over on Sunday a year earlier to this new facility. So these kids are there with their smiling faces on, and it's a beautiful thing to see. So it's on our Facebook page if you want to see that as well. Thanks, B. To God. We also want to say happy, um, not happy, but we want to commemorate and say thank you to all of our veterans. Do we have any veterans in the house today? I knew we did. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Anthony, thank you for your service. And um, I also thank my brother and my cousin and everyone else that I know. It's, 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 we don't like war, no, but we do know that people serve because people want to understand what freedom and liberty means. And that is a sacrifice. Whenever you sign that dotted line and say, yes, I will serve. Mm -hmm. And so we thank you for your service, for going against even sometimes what the community is saying and feeling. And many have lost their lives. And many have given the ultimate sacrifice and we are grateful because without them, we wouldn't be standing here today as well. So Amen. thanks be to God for your service. And we thank you for that. And also the men's, Presbyterian men will be meeting tomorrow, um, Monday the 13th of November, it's in your bulletin at 11 a.m. on Zoom, that yes. is right? And if you want to email us at stjames409 at verizon.net and ask for that Zoom um, um, invitation, we'll send that to you, we'll send that out to you as well. Thank you, Pastor. Right? Thanks be to God. So, oh. now, mm. it is time for the peace of Christ. <laughs> The Peace of Christ is an opportunity to share not only our hopes and dreams of aspiration of hope with one another, but our love with one another. And we get to get up and stretch our legs. <laughs> so we're grateful for that. So Ruling Elder Andrea Bradford, if you would read us the Peace of Christ so that we may say, and also with you. Yes, yes. And if I could also just say that it's so great to know the history of our people and St. James and all of the fun things that happened at this church over the last years of our existence. And so we share that historical piece. Our ancestors are watching yeah. and we continue that love that our ancestors began. The peace of Christ, the invitation to the banquet and feast of Christ is open to all. And there we find the peace of Christ. Be ready, 
And may this peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. You, you may press star six if you're on the phone and you can unmute yourselves and I'm going to bring you all in here as well. <laughs> We welcome you back to our worship service from our <laughs> life, and we're grateful that you are able to be patient with me. <laughs> Again, I have honey on my fingers, so just a moment because <laughs> I left my spoon in here. Thanks be to God. first time I heard that song, I had never heard this song before, I'd never known it, and a jazz musician named Rick Zayas gave me this sheet music and said, here's a version of this song I want you to sing. And it was this spirited, slow ballad that had this power and emotion to it. And I remember singing it in Cape May and almost just falling out because it was so beautiful. <laughs> Then I came here to New York and I heard it the way that it's being played now. And I was just like, oh, that's how the song goes. <laughs> but the feeling and the grace is still there for us. I want to congratulate um, Anthony Terrell on his um, successful art show um, in um, Batavia, New York. It has gotten him more work to do. Yes, indeed. He's working on a sculpture now, so we're grateful that he's back and that he's here. So we're grateful for that. Thank you. I just want to take one opportunity to ask for a special prayer. Um, those of you who remember several years ago, we had a young woman who was here for our, our, our Women's Day, Christine Pennock. And yeah. she is a dear, dear, dear friend of mine. She's had some health challenges over the past few years and some operations and so on and so forth. And she suffered, um, she did suffer a, a large medical setback over the week. So just keep her in your prayers. Um, a young woman. Um, who we really care about, who we really love. And I'm still very close friends with her. Um, she's on a board with me for another organization of which I'm a board. And she's sending the Yeah, so she supports us with her donations yes, as well. So we are grateful to, to you for your prayers for Christine and that she has a quick recovery and that her recovery will, um, will enable her to continue to do the important things that she's doing for her young people in the community and for the field of education and diversity and equity for all, which is what she's focused on after her doctor. So thanks be to God, and we'll keep her in our prayers. She's in our bulletin as well. So, so. ruling out Andrea Bradford. Yes, yes. It's prayers for our loved ones and our friends are always good. And we shouldn't forget our friends and our loved ones. And by the way, ourselves in our prayers. God gives us an opportunity to pray. Also, we have the opportunity to read God's word and to hear God's word for us. And so we now enter into that time of hearing and reading God's word. We start this time with our prayer of illumination. Let us say it together. We pray. The words of our sacred scriptures will serve to encourage us today and always. Amen. 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 We have three scriptures this morning, as we usually do. Our first reading is from Joshua. Joshua, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through the first part of verse 3, and then Verses 14 through 25, Joshua chapter 24. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago your ancestors Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. 
Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. <clears throat> now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered. Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And who did those great signs in our sight? He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. <laughs> then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. <laughs> he said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. <laughs> and our second reading from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 18. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Wow. And our gospel lesson, according to Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. 
Then bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. <laughs> but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. <laughs> but the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. <laughs> and while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. <laughs> Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. <laughs> Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> Thanks be yeah. to God. We'll explore that in just a little <laughs> bit, a little bit more. Uh, but I do want to speak to the young people for just a moment. So, Stefan, if you could move to that next slide. It says, your yes matters. And on the screen, there are all these Scrabble tiles in a circle. And in the center, it has Y-E-S. The Y is worth four points. The E is worth one point, And the S is worth one point. Now, in the game of Scrabble, when you make up words with tiles that have different score points on them, six points is not all that much. <laughs> But here's the thing, is that when you can boldly place your yes on a Scrabble board, how many words end with S? And you can take your S and it can fill in the end of another word. How many words end with Y? <laughs> and you can stick your Y onto someone's 15 to 20, 30 point word. You can just stick your Y on there and your E. How many words can be changed with the words, the letter E? <laughs> so your little 6.3 tile word can yield you so much more. Your yes matters. So Steph, you can stop sharing your screen now. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. All the people of Israel kept moving forward and going into all these lands and sort of moving into different spaces. And now we find out that they're living amongst the Amorites who they were supposed to conquer before. But they're living amongst them and they're even worshiping their gods. So they've mixed in. So the point is that Joshua is asking, who do you really believe in? Who will you serve? And you know, that means for us, sometimes when people say, oh, you go to church, do you really believe that stuff? Sometimes to be fit in with the crowd, we won't answer or we'll laugh and be like, my mom makes me go to church. <laughs> oh, my pastor, he's fun, but you know, it, 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 I just do it because it's fun to do sometimes. And we have, we do some fun stuff. We get stuff too. Well, we have all these excuses. But if someone asks you, do you really believe all that stuff? And if you can say yes, your yes matters. It means that you stand for something. It means that when people are trying to bully you, 
to do things that you don't want to do with peer pressure, they'll remember your yes. And that you can stand firm and says, because I believe that God wants me to be better. Your yes matters. I don't want you to be afraid to say yes to God, to Jesus, to church. Because if you have the firmness in your spirit to say yes to God, it's a whole lot easier to say no to all those other things that will tear you apart. So strengthen your yes. Shelby has strengthened her yes on her campus. And we say happy belated birthday to you. And I know that you're home with your parents this weekend. And we are grateful that your yes has stood firm. So we give thanks to all of you and encourage you that when you say yes, we hold you in high esteem and honor. Hmm. Because your yes matters. Gracious and loving God, give our young people the courage to say yes to your will and your ways. We adults know that there are times when people say, are you born again? Are you a Christian? And we're like, get out of my business. But <laughs> some of us also who just say, yes, I am. And we can see those faces melt. And we can see the hope that happens. So we ask that our young people be able to be firm in their yes with you. Not only for themselves and what you're doing in their lives, but for the opportunity it creates for someone else who really needs you in their lives too. Mm -hmm. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, Amen. Amen y'all. <laughs> been your mercy and it's it's been your grace that has kept me to this this very day I could have been dead and sleeping been your mercy and it's it's been your grace that has kept me to this this very day I could have been dead and sleeping in my grave but oh Lord oh Lord eh,
been your mercy and it's, it's been your grace that has kept me till this, this very day. I could have been dead and sleeping in my grave. Subaru from Alaska <laughs> to Venice Beach, California. <laughs> and when they left Alaska, they were at 150,000 miles. My brother <laughs> refuses for the past three years to get a new car. <laughs> My little Honda Accord gets me back and forth to where I need to be, he says. But there's one thing in both those Subarus and my brother's Honda that is the secret to keeping them alive. Changing the oil. <laughs> Changing the oil regularly will keep your car going and going and going. Don't wait till the manufacturer says it's time for you or the light to go on. You know every couple of thousand miles you need to change that oil. If you wait till the manufacturer says they're trying to get you to push it just a little bit more so your car breaks down right after the warranty. <laughs> So change your oil. There'll be other little things that go wrong, sure. You'll have to change your tires. You'll have to do all this other stuff. But if you change your oil, you have a better opportunity of that car lasting and lasting and lasting. It's a pure, simple truth that no matter how much they try and shift and change cars to make us buy new ones here and there, if you do that one little thing, change your oil. So, the question today from our scripture is, do you have enough oil? Do you have enough oil to sustain yourself for the bridegroom to come? Do you have enough oil to keep going in this crazy world until Jesus comes again? Do you have enough oil? Do you know where to go to get your oil changed in order for you to be able to move about in this world without the clanging and the clicking of your car, without the clanging and the clicking of your life? I happen to think that the Holy Spirit is part right back there somewhere. And if you feel that you need an oil change, all you got to do is walk into this space sit in the pew, sing your songs, pray your prayers, and the Holy Spirit will give you an oil change. So that when you walk out of here, you won't be the same. And you can go another couple of thousand miles. Yes. And come back next week. Before you think you need a new oil change. And week after week, you will find yourself renewed and running smoothly. <laughs> Do you have enough oil? Do you know where to get your oil change for your spirit, for your heart, for your mind, for your body, for your community, for your faith? This oil 
is not in a patch underneath the ground in Texas. It's not what we fight wars for over in the Middle East. This oil is the love of God and the peace of God as taught by his son Jesus, as espoused to by Father Abraham. Abraham who had faith enough to say, if you are going to fill me up and create a people in me, I'm gonna go with you to keep me filled, to keep me moved. And look at us, all these years later, still claiming ourselves as the children of Abraham, claiming Jesus as the child of Abraham, the, the, the son of David. All of our Abrahamic faith traditions know from whence our oil comes. <laughs> now, let me show you something. If you look on your bulletin cover, and we'll show you the slide at the, the very end as well, from, the, from, the, from when we show the, the end and after we do our amen. Many people in art history will show you these maiden virgins carrying these little oil lamps. It looks like a little genie's going to run out. That is not the oil lamps that they were using and carrying. They were carrying torches like the one you see right there on your boat with cloths wrapped around a piece of stick. And they had to dip them in the oil and light them on fire. The bridesmaids were not inside taking care of the bride and getting her dressed up and, and making sure that she was pretty and getting her underneath her, her not a veil because she was covered when they met her back then. It was not all of that. They were attendant only for the bridegroom to know where to go. The bridesmaids were assigned to the duty of the bridegroom. So when the bridegroom came and saw these torches, they knew exactly where to go and where to wind up. So the bridegroom does not know these bridesmaids. It's not like our weddings today, where you have a whole slew of bride, bridesmaids and, 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 bride, and groomsmen that are all knowing one another and dancing with one another and going to bachelorette parties and so on. It's not like that. He doesn't know who they are. He only knows that there will be lamps that will guide him to his bride. And so, you have five wise bridesmaids who have dipped their lamp in the fire, in the oil, and they are carrying it and moving it along. And as they move it along, they get to their destination. And when they get to their destination, they say, let's put this out because we don't know when he's coming. As we know in our scripture, the bridegroom is coming late. <laughs> and he hasn't shown up just yet. So they rest and turn off their torches and blow them out and let them say, okay, we'll dip them back in and we'll be ready for him and ready to light the torches for the banquet hall as well. Only problem is the five unwise surprised me. They did not have enough oil to dip in their torches again. When you dip in your torch again and soak it up, you light it up again anew. I looked online, and these are the type of torches that they actually teach young people to make very often if you're in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or you're doing survival training. You can take your cloths, get little towels, and wrap them around pieces of wood, dip them in oil, and light them on fire to light your way through in the middle of the night. But if you don't have a way to replenish that, your light will go out and you will be in the dark. So these bridesmaids did not have enough oil. And because they did not have enough oil, they got told to go back out and get some. So it seems strange to us, but now we know why it's not strange that the groom would say, I don't know you. <laughs> I said in Bible said it reminded me of the color purple. <laughs> you know, when Oprah's character is taken away by the maid, by the mayor's wife, and she learns how to drive. 
And the, and, and, and the mayor's wife says, I'll drive you home for Christmas so you can see your children. And then she can't figure out how to get it in reverse. <laughs> so then she says, well, I need you to come with me right now. She said, well, my, my brother can drive you home. I don't know him, <laughs> she says. Well, how about my sister? She can drive you home. She said, I don't know her either. <laughs> and so that character who's been pulled away from her family and beaten, and whose spirit has been beaten, has to leave her children on Christmas before she even gets in the house and go back. It's like these bridesmaids locked outside of the house, outside of the banquet. I don't know you. So I am not going to let you in to what is now my feast. Ooh. Because the marriage has happened and I am in charge of the household now. <laughs> this is not just an image of people who didn't listen. Jesus is also making a point of saying the dangers it is for a woman in the first century to be out after midnight, alone, unchaperoned, not able to move into a place of shelter. It is one of the most dangerous positions for a woman to be in. This analogy is not lost on the people to whom Jesus is speaking. Because the kingdom of heaven is like those whom the bridegroom says, I know you. But how dangerous is the world outside when Jesus says, I don't know you. Hmm. I don't know you because you haven't dipped your lamp in the oil. You haven't fortified yourself to be ready for when I've come to do God's will on earth. Hmm. So often, we get in our mindset, very often I believe, we've gotten into our mindset that the whole idea of waiting for Jesus to come back is to stop everything so that we can go to heaven. And what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all get to heaven. But what do we do here in the meantime? In the meantime, we have to make sure that we are all oiled up all ready to do God's work, to make God's work and will happen on the earth as much as we can so that when Jesus comes, he already sees that his father's work has been started. Why in the world would Jesus come into a church, come back again, only to say, I have to start my work all over again? <laughs> you haven't been oiled up and moving in the community, moving in the world, moving in your ministry like a Subaru and like a Honda? <laughs> You've left your car in the backyard? On blocks? I can't move you anywhere if your oil has frozen and dried up so that your engine block cracks. <laughs> so that your heart is hardened, so that your spirit is gone from the good works that God is calling us to do. Do you have enough oil? Now this is not a, not, a, not, a, not a criticism if you don't have enough oil. Because if you don't have enough oil, I get it. you know where to get it. Right. You come together in community and you worship and you pray, God, I'm weary. Jesus, I, little, I need a little bit more lubrication. Slide some oil to me. <laughs> you say, Holy Spirit, work with us while we are here today, lifting up the word to our God so that we may go out into the world and move smoothly and do what God is calling us to do. I often think what a 
world it would be if we all sat in church and were ready for Jesus to come in. Would he recognize that we are his people? From our behavior, from the way that we act, would Jesus walk through that door And we say, welcome, have a seat. <laughs> because certainly we wouldn't recognize them from the paintings that we see. Right. The paintings that we see are all imaginations mm -hmm. of what Jesus looks like. We don't know what he looks like. So if Jesus walked through that door, most likely what we say in the 21st century, if Jesus walked through that door, he would look like someone who sleeps on the green. <laughs> He would look like someone who is disheveled because they don't have a place to be. And he would bring all of his, all of his hood friends with him. <laughs> all 12 of his posse. <laughs> posse. He would be sitting back there. <laughs> and what would we do? Would we say, come on in and change your oil? Or would we look at them and say that car that you are in right now, the way that you are presenting yourself does not fit in this garage. Would we turn Jesus away because he is a 10 year old Subaru or a 12 year old Honda instead of a Lexus or a Cadillac? Friends, be ye ready. Mm. If your car is going to get you from A to B, then it means from A to B, you're on the way to see Jesus. Keep your oil ready. Keep your spirit, your spirit well oiled and ready to be on fire for God. And if we do these things, the bridegroom comes, we will have to be opening the door for the bridegroom instead of the bridegroom closing the door on us. Mm. For this whole idea, and this rumination and meditation of do we have enough oil? Give thanks to God, especially because you know where you can go whenever your red light comes on. <laughs> thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Gracious Lord, we thank you. We thank you for knowing where to go to replenish. We thank you for the examples of what it takes that it shows us that when we take care of things, that they can last and last until it's time. Until it's time for you to come and sit around the feast table with us. May we have enough oil with us and may we always be prepared. May we run smoothly and be ready to light the way, not just for the bridegroom, but for all who will come to the feast. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we're going to think about that moment when we all get to heaven. Will you rejoice? What a day of rejoicing it will be, huh? is the bridegroom and we open the doors with our lamps well lit because we've had them oil we will sing and shout the victory oh so see the wondrous love of jesus who sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions right and Oh
powerful, always creating, provider, healer, loving God. We could go on and on and on and on with adjectives to describe you because words are not enough. Yes. That too is a thank you to God for life. So may we in this moment, oh God, humble ourselves to be in thanksgiving for life. With the full recognition that as we may sit here and with eyes closed or in a posture of prayer, think about all the good things that you have done are doing and will do for us that there are people in this world who cannot see who cannot see the hope of what you have promised if they can have their faith that it will be so Lord we ask that you would be with us as we lift prayers for those people and to those people those who are sick and those who are shut in. For Christine Pinnock, Dr. Christine Pinnock, may her spirit and her soul heal. And then may her body follow quickly behind as she moves forward and how you are calling for her. We ask that you would pray for, that we would pray for, and that you would bless Fanny Harvey, who broke her clavicle this week in Chicago. Right as she was joyously ready to come home for a few weeks, the day after she called me to let me know, the next day she fell. Heal her, O oh God, in this space. Bring her home as she desires to be to New York City so that her soul may be satisfied. We ask prayers for Butler Dowry and Dorothy Green and Eric Williams as he goes through his journey. Because as much as we know the miracle of being able to have a double transplant, we know that you're not out of the woods until God says you're out of the woods. So bless him and hold him, help him to breathe and help his lungs to heal. And bless his family, bless Wendy as she tends to, to Eric, to her job, and to her beloved Shelby, to their beloved Shelby. Bless Miss Ethel Lee and Mary Suspides and Elder Kalua Morrison in the Bronx. My Aunt Pat. Sunday Simmons and Kenneth, I know you're out there, but we pray for you and bless you. Leslie and Rennick, feel our hearts. Prayers out for you in this long, long, long journey you've been traveling with his illnesses. And we pray, oh God, for our friend who contacted me in Paris to ask for prayers for us because she sang a couple of times here around this piano. Faye and she asked for our prayers, so we keep her in our prayer list as well, oh God. My friend Susan Brewer in Hawaii, who sent me the honey that I'm drinking today to soothe my throat, bless her as she tries to heal her body after two years of painful back and forth and in and out. Keep her spirits up in her life. Thank you, Lord, for blessing my cousin Candace Davis who had several limbs amputated from COVID itself and has just been a ray of light and beacon of joy to so many people in her survival. That's my veteran cousin Charles as he works to get his veterans benefits extended as they rightfully need to be. Bless Phyllis, bless Glorine, Joyce, Gwendolyn, Anthony, Brenda, so many in our community, all who are grieving. We pray for Anthony's son as well as his spirit <coughs> and psyche heals. And we pray for whoever 
is on your heart out there today. Be they someone who just walked into a police car with their hands behind their back cuffed, wondering what will happen with them. Let them know that they are a child of God. Bless the one who, at 74 years old, still is making the decision to try and do right and move into a rehabilitation for their addiction. Bless him, O oh God, and keep him. Hold him, God. We've seen him day in and day out. And we ask, O oh God, that he would feel our prayers and know that he is not in this alone. As are so many other people who think that they are alone, but they are not. And bless the children, O oh God. Bless their cries and their laughters. Bless their joys and their growing pains. May they learn the lessons from you that will make them your children on earth forever. Even as they move into adulthood, as we claim to be children, no matter how old we get, because you are our God. God, we love you. We thank you. Let some drops a blessing fall on us. Even me. Even us, Lord. Even us. Even us. ministry we ask for your offerings and your donations and we ask for your tithes and we ask for your ongoing support it doesn't have to be a one-off just because you're feeling blessed know that your blessing that you're feeling right now you give to the world with every dollar every penny every nickel so we ask that you give from your heart with joy, www.stjamesharlemnyc.org. You'll see the PayPal button. You can also, the young ladies are coming forward with their plates, to add to the plates as well. So we are grateful for them. So you're going to have me pray with these plates, right? Amen, amen. So we are grateful. So you want to bring the plate over here?
high for a reason because they are not for the earthly use. They are to be lifted up for your glory. So may these offerings and how we use them be lifted up high for your glory, oh God, just as our young people are showing us exactly what they're meant to do and how they're meant to be used. We thank you, oh God, for them. And we ask that you would bless us and keep us and keep us keep it on. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies here. Very good. Thank you so much. Friends, in our last hymn, not only is it an ode to wishes for how we may be in the world, but it is a prayer for all that is happening in the world. Some stand on one side, some stand on another side. And we get caught up in this, as I said before, debate. But this is our prayer. And we want overriding all of this. Oh, for a world where everyone respects each other's ways. Where love is lived and all is done with justice. And with praise. Everyone, Hi, Anthony. Thank you.